Legends were whole lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you. I'm your Wednesday night host of Body Bags. It is week 332. And this week, I thought I would take a return look at uh, some Italian horror, a movie that I don't think has been reviewed on uh, Body Bags yet. Uh, or at least I didn't see any. Uh, from 1988, Myrtle Lindsay's Ghost House, or La Casa 3, as it was marketed to cash in on the success of Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. And so, uh, with Ghost House, uh, it sort of comes in, of course, at the at the end of an era of Italian horror cinema, and uh, it is a weird film. It's uh, sort of a unique. Uh, Weird film. Uh, Joe D'Amato, uh, of course, has a hand in producing uh, through his Film Raj uh, company, who also did Stage Fright. And uh, as a result of that, you know how these things go. Um, at different points along the film, uh, Simon Boswell's score from Stage Fright is incorporated in really awkward moments. And I guess maybe only awkward if you love Stage Fright as much as I love Stage Fright. And to suddenly be confronted with a scene in this movie with the music from Stage Fright, just, it just, it's awkward, awkward for him. But that's Italian filmmaking. That's what happens a lot of times, right? So, Ghost House. Um, you know, this is a weird movie. Uh, this is a movie that uh, I, I, for the longest time, got confused with uh, Lucio Fulci's House by the Cemetery. Now, this is, uh, you know, when I was a kid going into movie store and renting, thankfully I had a movie store that I could go in and rent videotapes and that had a really substantial Italian section. And so I suddenly was finding out, you know, who Fulci was and Argento and, of course, Bava and... Uh, Oh, my mind's going blanked out. You know, just the whole slew of Italian uh, directors. And um, and so, but, you know, and even though I had the pages of Fangoria to help uh, sort of sift some of this out, somehow, some way, you know, when I, uh, when I went off into the Army probably and uh, got married in some years where I just wasn't really invested in horror, I sort of lost touch with a lot of the films that I had loved as a kid. And so when I started to reinvest, I started to rethink about some of these lost films and films I wanted to try to find or get my hands on, um, I often got it confused and I could never figure out why it was I was getting Ghost House in the house so confused. But Lindsay uses the same house from House by the Cemetery to film in. Of course, this is 1988 and the house is filmed, of course, in 1981. Uh, Fulci is the third piece of his Gates of Hell trilogy, and uh, and so that's probably maybe the main reason I got the two confused, uh, but they are totally different films, and uh, I can't remember if I actually showed you it or not, but La Casa 3, this is my Medusa DVD copy, of course what you see is the Screen Factory new release, which includes Witchery, and uh, of course uh, before this came out, I actually picked this up from a little shop in Italy via... Uh, I think it was uh, Amazon Italy, actually, and I uh, got a little letter by the shop owner as well thanking me. Uh, I don't know if it's because I live in the United States and bought a movie off of his shelf or whatnot, but I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And the only thing that kind of stunk about this was uh, no English. So all I had for a while was a copy in Italian of Ghost House, but then Screen Factory came out, and of course, you know, I was able to get that. and. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so Ghost House, uh, really basically at the heart of it, what you got here is a ham operator living in Boston, picks up this weird transmission and in the middle of the night, uh, sounds like someone's being murdered, uh, his girlfriend decides or, you know, uh, challenges him to try to uh, find the source of the signal, and so they kind of go on an adventure, and this leads them to this house with a very, very bad history and uh, but as they arrive there there are a few kids already there sort of camping out whatever it's an abandoned house so it's one of those houses that just attract people from time to time and so you know the two groups of people sort of kind of get caught up into what's happening and a lot of what he was hearing in the transmissions ends up being foreshadowing of actual things that have happened but not yet right 
And so these things will happen when they do. It just adds, I don't know. This film, you know, on the positive side of things, well, if you just like Italian cinema, it's not a bad film, even for Italian horror. But uh, it's not a straight, straight out, gut punching, Fulcian style, gore munching, you know, sort of just take you to the edge of your seat and just leave you hanging somewhere. It's got some really awkward, goofy, sort of comedic moments that aren't really that funny, but I'm not sure why they're put in there. Um, it's, uh, it makes for a weird, awkward film to watch. There are moments where you sort of get caught up in what's happening and you're like, dude, this is freaking cool. And then it's like there's moments where you're just suddenly like going, why is this in this movie? And, uh, but you know what is weird is, is uh, you know, I was thinking about this last night. I was watching this and I was thinking, in some ways it seems to me, I don't know, is this Lindsay's uh, sort of, um, I don't know, I don't know, moment to sort of ponder and think of what has been and what is it what obviously is not going to be anymore and that is you know the era of just Italian horror as we as we knew it and so the fact that he uses Fulci's house uh, to film this and there are moments in the film that seem almost as though they're designed or maybe were designed to be a tipping of the hat to Fulci they never they never sort of carry themselves out the distance to be that nod, if you kind of get what I'm saying. There's this guy, Volkus, who sort of hangs around. He's a weirdo who kind of hangs around the house. And he's the kind of guy that, man, he could have been uh, involved. Well, there's a few scenes that play out with him where he's just sort of, I don't know, he's just sort of injected himself into the meddlings of these kids in this house. And he sort of wants to be left alone. And so he sort of takes actions, you know, to his own hands. And, you know, there's a... Uh, a cemetery caretaker who he ultimately will go pay a visit to that could have been such an incredible nod to Fulci and early Italian cinema and it's just left wanting although as is what it is it's not a bad little scene um, there are scenes that happen in the basement of the house especially towards the end um, that uh, really you know there are moments that sort of take you back to greater moments in Italian cinema, Fulcian moments, Argento moments perhaps. Um, uh, what makes it really awkward for me personally is the inclusion of some of Simon Boswell's score from stage right, which just seems so out of place and awkward. That is the one thing I do have a hard time with is when you fall in love with a film as I have with stage right, and then I hear pieces of music taken out and put into another film, it just seems really awkward to me. Uh, but it is uh, Joe De, uh, D'Amato, of course, uh, through his Film Raj company, who put out uh, Ghost House, who also put out Stage Fright, and a few number of other films. I guess you got to expect this with the Italian Sun on. Um, but it is a movie that does grow on me, and it does, uh, you know, it just, it begs, I don't know if it begs a remake or not. Um, it would be interesting to see somebody write a love letter to Fulci, remake Ghost House, and really do it justice. Um, but you know, that era of filmmaking just seems not to be here anymore. But we didn't have, we're still here. Uh, and so that films like that give us hope. Uh, the Nun could have been so much more and really wasn't, but could have been. Uh, it was a nod to early uh, Italian cinema. Baba, even a uh, few nods to Fulci, whatnot, minor nods. <coughs> But uh, Ghost House, uh, it is an awkward, it's an intriguing story. Anytime you put a shortwave radio in and you get weird transmissions from nowhere and there's almost a Lovecraftian element there of the unknown breaking through into your world, it sort of, it begs interest, it begs a lot. But in the end, you're sort of left, man, this could have been so much more and it's too bad that as the 80s were coming to an end, that D'Amato and others who were pouring themselves, uh, well, maybe not really pouring themselves into this movie, but were giving them themselves, couldn't have 
had the foresight to say, you know what, let's let the 80s go out in style. Let's really make a, you know, a big splash with this one. Um, and let it be an incredible nod to Fulci. I mean, you use the house that he used in House by the Cemetery. Why not go the full distance and just write an incredible love letter to Fulci via this film in 88? Uh, so, I mean, uh, some, of the, some of the Tao sequences, of course, is an evil Tao at the center of the story. There's uh, uh, the family who originally lives in this house, who we see at the very beginning of this film. Uh, we find out later the dad was pretty much a whack job. Uh, and uh, does his family no good by wanting to collect artifacts from uh, the coffins that were being prepared to go in the ground. And so there's some creepy elements to this movie that underlie it, but on top, I don't know, it's just awkward, I mean, at times. And then there's scenes that, you know, you're sort of going like, yes, 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 take me, take me, take me, and then you're sort of, okay, move on. Uh, it's goofy. It's a goofy film at parts um but it's uh it's, it is it is italian and it is uh if for nothing else uh you know it's the latter end is the end of what was the greatness of italian horror cinema which um i love and adore myself personally so in week 332 just a few minutes uh, talking about Umberto Lenzi, talking about his 1988 film Ghost House or La Casa 3. Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, do you have any thoughts on it? Um, leave a comment, drop below. And uh, anyways, uh, football today. So it is actually technically Sunday for me, or I'm sorry, Saturday, watching Bills in Houston. Of course, when you see this, it'll be Wednesday uh, or sometime after, whenever it is that you hopefully, I hope, will watch. Um, but anyway, so getting hyped for my Bills on TV today. So as always, we leave these things off with Go Bills.